<laughs> right. So I just look like a regular lame stand-up. I have my suit on, like now. Yeah, you know? right, so, right. Uh, I went out there. I was excited, you know, because it was it was America to me, you know. Yeah. I'm from Canada. Star search. I thought I'll become a a, a star. <laughs> Hence the name, Star Search. Yeah, if you yeah. win, right? Yeah. So uh, I go out there. I'm excited, man. I went out there, and they had uh, uh, you go out, and uh, and they have like a clock. You, you know, you, you got two minutes to do. Mm -hmm. You only got to do two minutes. And I had at that time, I had like I had about two minutes. So uh, I. Uh, so this is gonna work out well, you thought? Yeah. yeah. And and I go out, and everybody hates my guts. You know, it's like dead silent. There's like no one laughing at all. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the know, clock starts to run the minute you, yeah, you get see going. The clock going down. Mm -hmm. And around uh, you know after about a minute and a half, you know you're not you know not much chance. You know winning them back. Uh huh. And uh, I think some people thought I was in a different category. <laughs> even, you know? But uh, uh -huh. nobody laughing is the worst thing. On and uh, my, you know the, the Canadian flags behind me. You know? Oh God! Oh no! Really? Yeah. Uh, and then one time I remember the worst part. <laughs> I looked over Ed McMahon. Uh huh. He was like glaring at me, like a mean look. Ed McMahon glaring at yeah. you? He wasn't even laughing. That's his job. You know, that's what he does. <laughs> he, was, he was taking some time off. <laughs> you know? I've never seen him glare. I don't I think know. anybody. Oh, it's mean, mean. <laughs> Me and Blair. Uh -huh. So then I, I got off. I was shaken, you know. I was mm -hmm. like stunned. And then my manager and a agent, they were like idiots, you know. Mm -hmm. And so they, they go like, uh, it was good. You know? <laughs> that was great. They're shaking right. my hand. So I go, really? Yeah, you think it was good? It worked out, huh? You go, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I go, but nobody was laughing, you know, which uh, I thought was uh, a gauge, you know. And they, they go, no, no, that's the way it is on this show. No, don't worry about that. And then as they're saying it, you know, the African guy comes on? Yeah. He says one joke. They laugh for two minutes, you know? And <laughs> it's like huge laughter. I can't even hear him. I'm going, what? The guy's going, it doesn't mean they, that's the way they like you. Uh-huh. So what so, happened? What was the end result here? The end result is, that, you know, they have judges that give you the, mm -hmm. they make up your score. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then the most humiliating thing is, you know, you know, you've lost. You have to go back out with the, with the guy, <laughs> you know? They're like stand there, you know. Uh -huh. And then uh, Ed McMahon, he just, you know, he goes, another tough decision for the judges. You know? <laughs> uh huh. That was actually the first time I heard laughter during the whole thing. <laughs> so, and the judges, it was like, uh, it was like uh, three guys. Robin Leach was the only guy uh, I knew, and then there were three other guys. And then so it was like, uh, so I got this is my score. Okay. I got three quarters of a star. <laughs> they, they actually. They can cut a star up? No, what happens is three guys give you one star, and one guy, and I think it was Robin Leach, gives you no star. <laughs> so, so you got you know. three quarters of a star and you lost. Yeah, he got four stars. And then afterwards, it's, uh, you go to this, uh, a guy, uh, you got this place, up, it's like a room, and mm -hmm. then there's a party after the show, mm -hmm. and everybody's there, and like all the winners are like in one section, you know, mm -hmm. happy, and then you're like sitting there with the Nicaraguan junior dancers, you know, <laughs> We would call them the losers, yeah. yeah. I'm feeling great. Uh, I finally quit smoking, you know. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I, uh, I smoked ever since I was a kid, so it was kind of tough for me, you know. I remember once I was eight years old, a little kid, behind my garage, sneaking a cigarette back there, and my dad caught me. He hauled me in. I thought I was in for the strapping of my life, you know. What he did is he pulled out a big cigar. Must have been half the size of my arm, this giant cigar. Stuck it in my mouth, lit it up, made me smoke it. All the way through, right to the end. That's when I started smoking cigars real heavy. <laughs> but I gotta get in shape, you know. I'm not, I watch a lot of sports, you know. I love watching sports on the TV, you know. The only sports I don't like is when they try to combine two sports. You ever see those, you know? And the sports don't even go together, you know? Like the guy will run a hundred yard dash and then fish. <laughs> My favorite show is the, the game shows, you know, I like the game shows a lot, you know. So there's one game show the other week, The Dating Game. You ever see that? Man. That's a cheap show there. The prize on that show, another contestant. <laughs> Last week they had a guy, I was like a crazy guy, loony bin, psycho, wing nut kind of guy, you know. And then they made the girls ask those questions, you know, laced with sexual innuendo. You know, the girl go, bachelor number two, if I were a popsicle, what would you do to me? The guy goes, well, if you're a popsicle, huh? Well, first of all, I guess I'd uh, take your wrapper off. <laughs> if you know what I mean. 
And then I'd grab a hold of your sticks. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And then I'd press you against the counter till you're broken too. <laughs> Put half of you in the freezer till later. <laughs> if you know what I mean. That was nuts. Ah, oh, man, it was a violent world, you know? I, try, I went to buy a dog. This guy tried to sell me this, the most killing dog in the world, a big pit bull, $600 pit bull, you know? And I don't want to buy that, you know? 600 bucks, holy cow. You know, guy says, this dog will protect your valuables. You know, I don't even have any of that valuable, you know? I mean, I buy the pit bull, that would be the most valuable thing I own, right there. <laughs> okay, you guys have been great. Thanks a lot, enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Star Surge has traveled around the world to find the best new international talent to entertain you. Tonight's highly competitive performances are very special, so we've asked ten very special international judges to give their professional opinions. Let's meet some of them right now. A longtime distinguished actor originally from England, currently the star of the ABC hit series Mr. Belvedere, please welcome Christopher Hewitt! Presently starring on the CBS hit series Falcon Quest in the role of Pillar Artiga, formerly for four years in the role of NBC daytime drama Days of Our Lives, Christian Alfonso. He is known as one of the true star makers of the international modeling field. His L.A. models agency has become the foremost modeling power on the West Coast and has introduced the exciting L.A. look into the world of high fashion. Please welcome Heinz Holba. Miss Universe 1988-89, representing Thailand, founder and president of the Porn Tip Foundation, benefiting abandoned and handicapped children, chairperson of the Wish from Heaven perfume and cosmetic line, and currently ambassador from Thailand to the United Nations, she is Porn Tip Nicaragua. <laughs> Executive producer, host, and writer of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, and run away with the Rich and Famous, ladies and gentlemen, Robin Leach. In international comedy competition, the challengers are from Canada, Norm McDonald. From Liberia, Bushmick. And from Australia, Vic Sorrente. Another hard decision for the judges. Let's see what it is. From Liberia, Bushmick. Bushmick. Right, congratulations. Bushman likes to party. Rock the Bushman. Rock the Bushman. So you beat uh, Norm Macdonald in 1990 on International Star Search. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> and, hey, you just cleaned me and I Chris's just, uh, apartment. I just cleaned your apartment. I'm uh, like a part-time nanny sometimes, and I still do comedy. No, McDonald, I'm not afraid of you. If you want us to get into a comedy bout, I would take you on anywhere in Canada, in London, in Australia, in LA, on the beach. It does not matter where. I am not afraid of you, man. I know you're a millionaire. Guess what? I'm going to knock you out with all your millions. You're going to have to come talk to the Bushmen. I think I have a weird memory of you that you probably wouldn't remember. I think I was in, I think I was in your hotel room. The, the, when you were watching, I showed up at your hotel room when you had just done your first Letterman with Caroline Ray. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that I actually watched you not watch your first Letterman <laughs> on television. Is that possible? I'm thinking. No, like, I, I, well, I would know I would not watch it. That's for sure. It was like 1989. Is that about right? Yeah, I think I'm not going to date, but probably about that. Yeah. That's Cause, funny because I, yeah, I, I, I know Caroline and I remember you. Uh, and I remember Carol. My, all my well, memories are so vague. Right. Well, it was weird because I, I barely knew Caroline. You know, we were sort of hanging around, and, you know, with this, this group of comics. And I had a car, and she goes, "Let's go to the hotel." My friend Norm, <laughs> it just did Letterman tonight. So we go over there, and I that was the first time I ever met you. And I don't know how how much you even played the states because it was. Right I didn't right. know any comedians from the states. That was my problem. Yeah. Right. And so <laughs> I go up to this room. I meet you, and you're about to go on Letterman, and and I'm standing there with Caroline, and you were on your bed, face down, with your hands <laughs> hiding your eyes. 
for the entire time. <laughs> Does that sound like a real thing? No, that would be me. Uh, I can't. Uh, <laughs> well, you know how it is when you know uh, how bad you are, and uh, you know what I mean. Did you know? You know I mean, I, well, I, I know that's how we perceive ourselves. I don't right. know if it's really true. You did well, right? Well, we have. We can. Pro- we probably know more than uh, the, another person. <laughs> no, we don't. About ourselves, I don't know. No, but I mean, how can like? Are you not able to watch yourself now? Our uh, next guest has performed at clubs all over Canada and the United States, including the Improv in Los Angeles and also Catch a Rising Star and Stand Up New York here in Manhattan. And now, making his network television debut, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Norm MacDonald. Norm, are you... Well, thanks. Good to be here. Uh, uh, I've been traveling around a lot, watching a lot of the TV, you know, and uh, you've seen these new sports on the TV where they'll try to combine two sports together and make up a new sport. You know, like a guy will run a hundred yard dash and then fish. <laughs> so I love the TV. You know, I saw a cat food commercial and I said at the end of it, I said, all natural food for your cat. All natural food. But cat food is made out of horse meat. Yeah, that's the way it works in nature. The, the cat right above the horse in the food chain. <laughs> Matter of fact, every time my kitty gets a little cooped up in the apartment, I like to take him down to the racetrack, let him stalk some prey down there. It's so cute, and he comes trotting back with a stallion hanging out of his mouth there, you know. <laughs> but I love the TV, you know, anything at all. The only thing I don't like, you ever see it when there's a celebrity that you really respect and admire? And then he shows up on some cheap TV show, you know? Last week I was watching the, the Hollywood Squares and a secret square, J.D. Salinger. <laughs> but I like game shows, that's my favorite thing. You know, big prizes and everything. You ever see the dating game? You ever see that show? That's a weird show there. The prize on that show, another contestant. <laughs> Talk about cheap. And they always do the same thing on that show. They get a beautiful girl, match her up with three giant dorks. <laughs> Last week they had a guy on. It was a crazy guy. Looney bin, psycho, wing nut. You, know, you can tell by the way they introduce him. They go, bachelor number two is a shadowy lurking character. <laughs> whose hobbies include skulking. Please welcome from no fixed address. He's just a guy. Menacing figure shambles into the studio there, you know. Then they make the girl ask those questions, you know, laced with sexual innuendo. You know, girl go, bachelor number two, if I were a popsicle, <laughs> what would you do to me then if I were a popsicle? That's what's testing the card here. And the guy goes, well, if you're a popsicle, huh? Well, first of all, I guess I'd uh, take your wrapper off. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And then I'd grab a hold of your sticks. <laughs> If you know what I mean, and then I'd press you against the counter to your broken two. <laughs> but happy in the freezer till later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Abby? You understand what I'm getting at? It's crazy. But uh, a lot of violence on TV. You know, kids aren't supposed to watch violence now on a TV. They're afraid maybe the kids will copy what they see on a screen, you know. I can't even get a funny cartoon anymore because some 12-year-old watched a particularly violent episode of the Roadrunner Coyote Show. And the next day they found him in the bottom of a canyon. <laughs> and two giant springs strapped to his feet. A big spring. A couple of springs. Had a little umbrella in his hand. Sign said, yikes. But there's violence everywhere. You know, I was reading a paper, this guy, if you can believe this, a guy killed his family because the devil told him to. Can you believe that? Imagine that, killing your family, and then you go back to the devil, you go, yes, devil, I did as you instructed. I killed my family, and I chopped them up and put them in a duffel bag. Here they are. I'll be burying them tonight at the shallow grave by the side of the railroad track, as you have commanded, O oh, Lord, host of the hoary netherworld. <laughs> then the devil pulls off a mask, it's me, Bob! <laughs> You got me, Bob. You got me there. I, I got 
got my family in a duffel bag over here. That's one for you there, Bob. This dirty dog. So I had this dream today. You ever have a dream, and then you wake up right in the middle of a great dream, and then you're back in your stinking life again? <laughs> so then you try to fall asleep, re-dream it? Man, that never works. Always end up with some weird mutation of your original dream there, you know? Like in the first dream, I was in a pool with Christy Brinkley, and we were swimming toward each other, and then I woke up, so I fell asleep again, and I end up shooting pool with David Brinkley. <laughs> We're talking to uh, Uma about geography, and she spent part of her early life in India. And yeah. you're, you're a Canadian, as is Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Canada. Is that where you began as a comedian? Yeah, I did stand-up in Canada, and mm -hmm. uh, man, that stinks. Really? Oh, my God. You think, you ever go on the road and do stand-up? Yeah, used to do that all the time, sure. That stinks, right? Yeah, it was, it was not. I mean, the travel was grueling. Yeah, plus everyone hates you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't need to go on the road for that. <laughs> but uh, I remember this one, guy, one gig I did. It was like, uh, uh, I call them a gig. Yeah, sure, because <laughs> you're in showbiz. Right. Yeah. So I, uh, it was in uh, uh, Red Deer, Alberta. You know where that is? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Well, you know, every other place in the map. Part of that Red Deer Metroplex up there in Alberta. Yeah, it was uh, just outside of Red Deer. and. Uh, oh, just outside of Red Deer. <laughs> it, was before, it was before I was hot. So, uh, so uh, uh, I couldn't get Red Deer. Uh -huh. So, uh, <laughs> for those of them that didn't understand the first part. Yeah. So, I was... Uh, I was at this gig and it was tough, you know. Like mm. the guy told me before I went on, he said, you know, you got to do the whole hour. I had to do an hour. Gee, that's grueling. That's it really is tough. And he said, if you don't do the hour, you don't get the check. Yeah. Because a lot of people have been, you know, leaving before mm -hmm. the hour was over. And uh, so I started doing my comedy, you know. And everyone hated my guts. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, like ten minutes into it, if, any, if everyone hates your guts for the first ten minutes, you know, you're not going to win them over. It's discouraging. Yeah, you yeah. know, you're not going to have a good other 50 minutes no. so so everyone hates me so then after a whole hour of that i have to host a joke contest you know where i bring people from the audience a up. little talent show kind of thing yeah and they tell their jokes yeah so they go up and they're hostile towards me you know they oh my god so every guy it would be like he would use me as as like the butt of the joke yeah. you know what i mean you know the guy would be going okay uh you know they have a mic there in their hands oh that's what you're doing <laughs> thank you norm thank you and what, what would this be? Would this be a phone? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Sometimes this isn't a mic. It's not my job. But... Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the well, guy... They should have loved that in Canada, for <laughs> everything. Did. I should have. I should have used that. I wasn't that savvy at that point. But uh, so the guy's up there. He's got the mic, you know. And he goes like, he's using me. Everybody, you know, it would be going like, uh, okay, folks, here's the joke. Hey, what's your name again? Norm. There's this fruit, Norm. You know, and they get a big laugh. And uh, so, so everybody would be abusing me more. Finally, this guy comes up, you know, drunk, you know, and he goes, hey, Norm. You know, and I go, yeah. He goes, uh, uh, well, you want to see my impression of a whale? You know? And I go, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. You know? and, uh, so he has his beer, so he takes a big swig of beer, and then he, like, spits it up all yeah. over my face yeah. and my shirt. Yeah. And I, said, I didn't even get it either until yeah. much later. Yeah. <laughs> That's too bad. It's the blow yeah, the of course, yeah. Too bad. And, the, and the beer is the, yeah, the sure. seawater. Yeah, exactly. So, so now I got, I got stuff dripping over me. I have to give this guy the gift certificate, you know? He oh, he won. won. Oh, yeah, people went yeah. crazy. So then I'm depressed, I go in the corner, I'm playing Frogger, you know, I got water. <laughs> I got beer, it was yeah, where, sure, beer, the yeah. beer was, was uh, playing the water. Yeah. What a story, huh? Yeah? <laughs> Have you been uh, out doing stand-up? I know you're probably really busy with the show, but do you ever get to go out and do uh, gigs? Oh, no, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been uh, off uh, uh, show business for a while, and I... Uh, I do the smoky nightclubs, you know, uh -huh. 
And uh, uh, recently, uh, I was at a place, and a dude uh, said, "Hey, would you mind going to, to this hospital? You know, to to entertain? You know, uh, uh, for the orderlies and the, mm. the the people in the hospital. I thought that'd be a nice thing I think to do. Is, you know, yeah, because yeah. I don't do a, <clears throat> a great deal of nice things. So, uh, <laughs> no, I do. I'm a very I, nice course, guy. You know, nice. Yeah, I know. Nice yeah, we've read all about you. <laughs> 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 So I go to the hospital, you know, and I'm driving to the hospital. The guy's driving me. I don't know how to drive. And I'm all happy. I'm going. I'm sorry. Do... Wait a minute. You say you don't know how to drive? I don't know yet, but I will. I'll learn. <laughs> As my child approaches his 13th birthday, I <laughs> feel are... I should soon. Yeah. So uh, uh, I go to the uh, I go to the uh, the hospital, and the guy Sid Younger is the books this gig. He tells me, you know, uh, you know, you just talk to the, you know, you entertain for the orderlies and the, the, the staff and the patients, you know, and I. I get there, so uh, the guy's driving me there, and uh, looking for the hospital and everything, and we're getting close to the hospital, and all of a sudden there, I see like some barbed wire, <laughs> right? And there's guards and everything, and there's a big giant sign that says, State Hospital for the Criminally Insane. <laughs> so now I'm being frisked and ID and everything, and I get in, and I... I and now I'm going, I, I don't even know if these people deserve a show, you know? <laughs> Well, if you can brighten anyone's day, I think yeah, it's a nice thing. Yeah, but I don't want to brighten the day as somebody who slaughtered their family no, last that's, week. No, that's, yeah. So, uh, so I get in there, you know, and I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'll do it. I'm committed to doing it. I go, well, where do I perform? Like a, ca a cafeteria or something? <laughs> Guy's like, no, we got a theater. Oh, a theater. <laughs> <laughs> a big theater in the state hospital for the criminally insane. <laughs> so uh, I go in there. They go, the Statler brothers were here. <laughs> So I go, all right. So uh, I go in there, you know, and it's a beautiful theater, you know, and it fits uh, like a thousand people. And uh, there's like 40 criminally insane guys in there. <laughs> and uh, I don't even know. I don't know what the rest of them are doing. And uh, so uh, I, 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 I go, and then the guy introduces me, you know, and uh, <laughs> and uh, he has he had like an old bio of me or something, I think. And uh, but it was ridiculous uh, introducing me to these guys. Right. And it was like, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm from Evening at the Improv and George Schlatter's Comedy Club and all this. <laughs> Norm MacDonald, you know, and there's nothing. They're all muttering criminally insane things to each other. <laughs> And, uh, so, uh, so I'm walking. I've never had this. I'm walking toward the mic, and I start getting heckled. Like before, I'm not even on stage. Yeah, I'm like 15 feet from the mic, and yeah. I hear, "Nice shoes, bitch." Oh, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> so I go up, and then just all kinds of insane things. One, uh, one guy goes, "Where's the Sadler Brothers?" <laughs> And then the other guy's like, yeah, what is with those shoes, bitch? And I'm not even at the mic. Uh. I didn't even get to the mic yet. So I get there, and then as, as soon as I, I start talking, I, I start uh, with my answering machine bit, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> you know that. Yeah. So uh, I'm like, anyone have an answering machine? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and they're like, go home! <laughs> go home! They keep yelling. Yeah. So I just had it, and I said, uh, I said to them, I said, well, that's the beauty of it, I can. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then you hit the road.